Lately, we've been working on summation notation, approximating areas under curves by rectangles, and Riemann sums. And I want to um, explore with you right now um, producing a self-contained formula for a right Riemann sum for a particular function over a particular interval. Um, so I'd like to start by reminding you about the formula for the right Riemann sum. We're expressing that by using a capital R, um, and we're putting the number of rectangles down right here. So it's a right Riemann sum um, uh, with n rectangles, and that is delta x as one symbol, the width of a rectangle, times the sum from j equals 1 to n starts at 1 because we're omitting the left endpoint, and we're going to end because we're including the right endpoint. See one of my other videos if that didn't make sense, of um, f of x sub j. So this is the generic abstract way of writing the right Riemann sum. Um, and it's not so great in the context of these particular things right here. I can't do this yet. Right? I want to know what numbers do I do? Like, what do I do? What do I do with J? I don't want to have to go look things up in a table. Um, I just want to. I just want to have them in a formula. Okay. So I'm going to draw a little um, a little number line, um, and uh, a sketch of my function. So here's some axes. We're integrated. Uh, interested. <laughs> We're interested in the interval from two to four. And my function is x squared, which is a parabola. So there's my parabola. And we're interested in this area inside of here. So we're interested in that area. Okay. That's x squared, x, y. Um, so we've partitioned the interval from 2 to 4 into n equal pieces and equal intervals, right? Because we're taking uniform partition because it's easier to work with. We want to know what's the width of one of these things. Well, the width of one of those is delta x. Or if your variable is t, it's delta t. Or if your variable is z, it's delta z. Whatever it happens to be. Um, Right, so our goal uh, with this part right now is we're going to try to replace this delta x by something that I can actually work with. We're trying to produce a self-contained formula so I can just plug stuff in and go. Um, so this is equal to, well, what's the total width? Because we're, we're taking the total width and breaking it into n equal pieces. Um, the total width is 4 minus 2 over n, which is equal to 2 over n. So we can replace delta x by 2 over n. r sub n equals 2 over n. Cool. The sum from j equals 1 to n. So this part right here, um, I, can make that, I can make that more specific even without using anything over here. That right there is just going to be x sub j squared. Okay. So I need to know what is x sub j, and then I'm going to take that and I'm going to square it. Okay, so x sub j is the thing that's going to be inside of, inside of these. Okay. And I want to get x sub j, a formula for it, so that I don't have to go look things up in a table. Okay. So um, what we should do is um, we have a picture. And we haven't fully labeled it yet. And I'm a big fan of pictures. And we're going to label everything in sight. I just love labeling everything in sight. OK. So one of these, one, one step width is delta x. That's the width of one of these little intervals, which means that this one right here is 2 plus delta x. And then this one here. I'm going to step over by delta x again. That's going to be 2 plus 2 times delta x. This is 2 plus 3 times delta x, 2 plus 4 times delta x, and so on. OK, so all I'm doing is increasing the number in front of the delta x. This is x0, x1, 
x2, x4, right? That's equal to x sub 4. This one's equal to x sub 2. So check it out. The number that's in front of delta x is the subscript, right? Which means that the generic jth one, this is x sub j, can be expressed as 2 plus j times delta x. x sub j is 2 plus j times delta x. OK, 2. I'm probably going to have to erase that. I don't think I'm going to have enough room. OK, 2 plus j times delta x. But we know what delta x is. We totally know what delta x is. We already figured that out. Delta x was 2 over n. OK. I've got this standalone thing. Um, and now I can actually now I can actually do it. If we specify an n, say we were to be like n equals 5. OK, fine. Then we would be computing like r sub 5. That would be equal to 2 over 5 times, let's go ahead and start doing the sum. Uh, I'm going to go 2 plus uh, 1 times 2 over 5 squared plus 2 plus 2 times 2 over 5, just a 2 over 5 squared plus plus 2 plus, I'm going all the way to n, uh, 2 times 5. Uh, nope, I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Uh, this one, this one is wrong. That's supposed to be 2 over 5 all the time. I'm going to leave that in the video. I think it's valuable for you to see me make mistakes. I think it's tremendously important that when you do mathematics that you leave yourself room to make mistakes and catch them and learn from them and then hopefully not make them again in the future. You're always going to make mistakes. I'm always going to make mistakes. Um, and so I think there's value in me leaving those in uh, my video. I make mistakes all the time. So the thing in front of the 2 over 5, um, which is delta x, is the thing that's changing. So finally, I would 5 times 2 over 5 squared close it. Right. And, uh, the point of this is that uh, all, everything in sight here is a number. I have no symbols left. Everything here is a number, um, which means that like my computer will will do this for me. Right. I get some number um, out of it. I'm not going to do it right now. Um, by all means, you could do it. Um, I'm, I'm going to spare. I'm going to spare myself. OK, um, so what was the point of this exercise was um, this thing right here that we found, this thing right here is um, self-contained. Um, and what I mean by self-contained is that I don't have to look anything up. I don't have to look anything up. Right? I don't have to go like grab something from some table or anything like that. Given an N, and j is specified because we know that we're going between 1 and n. So given an n, this, this gives a number, right? This gives a number. Um, so uh, I think we should probably um, uh, summarize um, what we just did in steps right there, and then we'll call it, um, and then we'll call it a video. So let's try to distill, distill some steps for success if we want to write down a formula like this on our own. Um, okay, so uh, I feel like step one is um, write down the formula for the right or left Riemann sum abstractly. So we should just write down the formula as kind of like step zero, um, right? The formula for um, R sub n or L sub n, right, abstractly. That says or. Okay, so that was like this thing right here. This is step zero. That's step zero. 
Um, I feel like the next thing that we did um, was we uh, found a formula for delta x. Well, delta x is equal to um, the width of the total interval over which I'm estimating. I mean, I'm estimating from A to B. Um, and then how many pieces am I dividing it into? Two. We need to get a formula for x sub j. Um, it's always going to look like, well, you go to the left endpoint, A to B, we're stepping by delta x, we're always going to step by delta x, um, plus how many times do you have to step to get to that thing, J times delta x. Well, that's just equal to a plus j times b minus a over n. Three. And then uh, the last step would be to substitute um, both uh, delta x and x sub j into your formula, that's a comma, um, uh, into your formula, um, and then the available simplification we're going to do. If we really wanted, we could like distribute out this, um, this square, um, and we'd get some, some terms. Um, I don't feel like it would be uh, uh, significantly improved for this particular example, um, but particularly sometimes if we start integrating when a is zero, um, this, this two plus right here would be absent, and we'd be able to like start factoring things out um, pretty easily. Um, uh, but I don't want to do that right now. Um, so uh, I think I should label, okay, so step zero was recall. Step one um, was a formula. Uh, step two right there, and then substitute and simplify. Um, so you just have to um, grab those pieces, put them in the right places, and then you're off to the races. Um, thank you so much for your kind attention today. I really appreciate you, and I will wish you all the best and happy integration. Ciao.